will there be water in our homes, factories and fields if the climate changes? Water knows no borders, but neither does drought. Six months, no rain. So, can we learn from our neighbours? The European Union has made water a priority, both at home and in its diplomacy. We take you to Jordan, one of the most water-scarce countries in the world. In Jordan, freshwater reserves are running out, both below and above ground. Now each person has barely 61 cubic metres of available water per year, compared with an average of 4,000 in the European Union. Important waves of Palestinian, Iraqi and more recently Syrian refugees in this stable kingdom have put pressure on the resource. In the Jordan Valley, this new drinking water plant was built to tackle the crisis facing the north of the country. 500,000 of Syrian refugees come to north of Jordan, so that's why the project uh, uh, come to supply and improve uh, the water quantity in north of Jordan. This is one of the many projects co-financed by European cooperation. Inige works for the German Development Bank, KFW, and Guillaume for its French equivalent, AFD. Here, the AFD co-financed the plants together with the European Union and the European Investment Bank, while KFW is participating in the rehabilitation of its source, the King Abdullah Canal, one of the country's only water courses. You might see there's a lot of cracks in Jordan. Overall, Jordan, the water losses are at 50% because of technical losses or because of administrative losses. They are not being counted, they're not being paid for. We and other development partners support Jordan in reducing the water losses to a more moderate level. On travaille systématiquement dans tous les projets d'investissement en infrastructure avec nos partenaires européens, que ce soit sur la qualité de la réutilisation des eaux usées, les pratiques d'efficacité de l'eau, de réduction des pertes. Ça permet d'avoir des impacts assez, assez profonds. All together, this is our biggest uh, portfolio globally in the water sector, amounting to 1.3 billion euros. Uh, partly concessional loans, partly grant financing with the support of the German government. L'importance c'est aussi d'aller vers les objectifs de développement durable des Nations Unies qui place un cadre dans lequel on est tous interdépendants sur la planète. Si certains n'y arrivent pas, on n'y arrive pas tous. European cooperation is also funding improvements to water transport and storage in the country's second largest city and work on six water treatment plants so that they can offer treated water to farmers. We head for the capital, where Europe is supporting a mega project that is vital to the country's development. Your Excellency. Good to see you. My name is Ryan. One of the world's largest desalination plants is to be built in Aqaba in the far south. The water will be pumped 450 kilometers from the Red Sea to Amman. A lot of energy will be involved in this project, especially we're talking going from zero level with the city level all the way up to Amman plus 1,200. If this project did not work out, the share of water would drop down to 30 meter cube per capita, meaning only water for drinking, not for agriculture, not for industrial, not for anything. From the European community, we got a huge support, technical wise, financial wise. Hopefully we will do it. The cost is estimated at over 4 billion euros. A French consortium won the tender. The EU is one of the top donors, with almost 100 million euro in grants, combined with at least 300 million euro in loans from the European Investment Bank. We see in practice, on a daily basis, how people can invent, reinvent, uh, make the best possible use of scarce resources. And the southern part of our continent, in Europe, is going to be exposed uh, to this challenge as well in the coming years, and it's a source of inspiration. This year, the European Commission will be presenting its own water resilience strategy, aimed at ensuring that everyone has a clean and sufficient water supply. Less than an hour's flight later, we're now in Cyprus. Ici sur l'île, les réserves d'eau sont très basses. Les autorités se préparent à l'un des étés les plus difficiles de ces dernières années et elles misent sur les ressources non conventionnelles. Like Jordan, Cyprus has no choice but to filter seawater. It has five desalination plants and plans to build ten more. The country is also pioneering a less energy-intensive and more circular practice, wastewater reuse. 
This treatment plant is equipped with a technological innovation called membrane reactors. This type of uh, treatment plants are very compact, very small footprint. The clean water passes through the membranes. Organic sludge stay in the tank and that can be used for energy generation. A European regulation defines the quality requirements for this reclaimed water. It's a water without phosphorus, nitrogen, very low solids, and is uh, perfect for irrigation. It's not drinkable, though. It's not drinkable, but with some additional filtration, you can make it uh, potable water. This so-called tertiary treatment is set to be installed in all the continent's major water treatment plants. This basin will gradually be emptied when the rain will fail to irrigate neighboring plots, safeguarding the island's food sovereignty. Sitari, Tritari, Sitarobulla, very nice water. Water is also vital to Cyprus's hotels, which welcomes some 4 million tourists every year. So we do everything we can, even if it's small water-saving techniques like changing our faucets and our taps, having sensors, all of this green grass, it's all done with recycled water. A new European directive aims to maximize these practices and even promote additional wastewater treatments. The next step will be to eliminate micropollutants, such as those found in medicines and cosmetics. Hello. Thank you, doctor. This lab at the University of Cyprus is world famous in this field. The problem of micropollutants is quite complex because there are so many of them, and as soon as we learn something about some of them, new uh, ones pop up. We have to find solutions because we have to promote wastewater reuse. The European Union is pioneering now this field, okay? The implementation of all this new legislation will drive technology. So knowledge is driving policy and policy is driving technological progress. We finish with a children's book recommendation signed by the scientists, The Secret Handbook of the Blue Circle, which is also available in English. Is this you? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. See you soon on the roads to green.